when I am functioning in that role, um, I am my consciousness is open with a vast number of other beings that are in different uh, game boards. Okay. Um, it's a collective happening and it's uh, too much power for any one individual to have in any realm. So there's a um, so there, there's like checks and balances that work, <laughs> as opposed to our government, which is having a little trouble <laughs> with the checks and balances. Um, and each being has a particular task. All of our consciousness is linked together, so I have access to what they're all seeing, they have access to what I'm seeing. There's, uh, when, the, when the healing started, um, however many years ago, it was on a much smaller scale. I was working with one person at a time. So there were five guides, and we were working with their emotional body, their mental body, and then as my consciousness started to shift, then I started seeing the soul body, and then I started seeing light grids, and I started seeing these, these layers. And then when I started working with groups of people, the number of guides got bigger. Um, the dimensions expanded, to larger, larger dimensions. Um, and I started seeing uh, like the dimensions stacked in each person. So if there were seven people, I'd see you know, the layers of their being, like little, little columns with each of the stuff that was, was happening in them. Um, and then, as things continued, I started to see more the collective. So I might see the whole, uh, uh, sort of like a collective soul body, which then had all of that information uh, together in a package, right, in all along. Um, and and now now I mean it's it, so it just it keeps it's gotten bigger and bigger and bigger and. I've taken a break from doing sessions for a few months because there's been a lot of shifting happening for me. And I did a little short session um, last night and uh, it was, I don't know how much I shared last night. It was kind of mind blowing for me, but I've been seeing people's astrology. And uh, the, so when I talk about the, the, there are physical, physical aspects that are connected with our consciousness on all of these levels. So I've been opening through this larger cosmic level and being with the, the actual um, astrology of someone's birth and the trajectory of that astrology through a lifetime. And so last night in the session, the, that little mini session, I was seeing each person's as opposed to their you know, emotional body, mental body, soul body, I'm, I'm seeing the, the movement of their astrological patterning through this life. And I, that's what I was seeing, these columns of that, of everyone, and seeing the probability fields around each of those alignments. So I was seeing how free will is engaged and that there's a probability field of how that's going to manifest, but free will engages that. And what, what came in in that session was this profound magnitude of light with all those forces of evolution that would support and align each person to the <coughs> most resonant probability coming forward. So it was like a, a fine tuning. There's no action on my part. There is no personal will doing anything other than the personal will completely aligning and surrendering to the movement of God or the movement of creation of the highest principles, frequencies possible. And um, in, the, in the beginning, when I was working with um, one person, in my sweet little office on a futon <laughs> in Northampton, there would be, I would see the 
emotional, I would see the substance of the emotional identification. When we identify with something, there's a, a contracting and an identifying with that experience which brings it into form and it sustains. And, and you can find it in the body, you can find it in, the, in these different layers of the, the bodies, you can find it in the, the soul body. And I would see those, and the practice then was the way the, the guides were working. One would be holding the container, another would be looking through all the karmic material to make sure that a supporting in one particular way wouldn't trip up something else in an unhelpful way. Um, there were, another would be bringing in the frequencies that were uh, most useful to support the, the shifting. There are lots of different, different parts for supporting the whole. And so that, and my role could be any one of those and I didn't choose what any one of those roles was. There's a surrendering to, okay, what's happening? And at some point I was actually then asked to be the overseer, which was terrifying. This was still in my office, my little office. And, and each of the roles are shared. There's a learning that's happening on all levels. But even in that role, <coughs> one is not left alone as a place of power of doing. There were guides overseeing me in my overseeing with all these checks and balances of understanding how the whole thing happens. In the beginning, I, I had never worked well in my human life with teams. I had a lot of judgment about the quality of things that were happening that you know, in my, that, that, that didn't resonate with me and I had a hard time with it. And when I stepped into doing this group healing, it was such a profound relief and um, amazement for me of, of recognition of how teams are supposed to work. And that there's a hierarchy. The beings that there are, there, are, there are masters and then there are beings that are not masters because evolution is happening. And so the beings that aren't masters need to see how a master makes a choice around the situation. But the whole thing is uh, in relation to each other with a profound respect and equality. The being who is not a master is equal to the master. There is equality with a recognition of the difference of maturity. And there's no judgment. If, if one has a deed, so sometimes part of, the, part of the role is to reach down to denser frequencies that are really uncomfortable and sticky and coagulated where we get stuck. That's part of creation. And someone has to do that <laughs> in that group, you know? And, and when it was me, then I would also be aware of why it was perfect that in this high frequency gorgeousness, I'm the one who's going down and hanging out in the muck, you know? Because I needed to be able to stay in muck and resonate light. I needed to practice that. And when I saw another guide being asked to do that, I got curious. How come they got to do that, <laughs> you know? And seeing, oh, because they need to practice. They're outside of, out of a body doing the healing work. They needed to practice moving through the dimensional frequencies and coming back up without getting stuck. So that's why they needed to do it. And another time when I was resting in a higher frequency in myself, it was my role to do it. And I did it in a completely different way. There's just a resting as truth and the radiance of love and love just radiates through that thing and then the thing that's caught rises up to love because that's what happens. So there's, there's a profound, it's a, it's a profound thing that's happening. 
and I am, I am humbled and in awe and gratitude in every single session that I yeah, have the honor to participate in. <laughs>